Monster OS is a new front end for the NBINIC RG35XX. It's based on Garlic OS and needs that to be installed first. And it then takes away from it rather than adding to it. And if you think that sounds weird, then stick around and I'll show you exactly what I mean. Now, in order to install Mustard OS, you need to have Garlic OS installed first. And if you've already got that installed, then great, you can probably skip this bit. But if you haven't, then I'm going to take you through a basic installation of Garlic OS. If you scroll right down the page, you'll come to this section at the bottom where you'll see there's two links. The link on the left is a download which enables you to basically unzip the file and copy the files on top of a stock card. The other option, which is the one that I'm going to download, is a whole card image. And the reason I'm downloading that is I'm going to put this onto a blank 64 gig micro SD card. Because it's an image, a disk image, I don't need to worry about formatting the card as FAT32 or anything like that. Because what this is going to do, it's going to partition the card. Some of it will be Linux partitions and there'll be a couple of uh, FAT32 partitions as well. But it, the image will handle all that for me. So let's get started. So now that the file's downloaded, I'm just going to unzip it. And if we look inside the folder, you'll see there's two files. One of them's the image file and the other's a readme.txt file. And I strongly urge you to have a look in that readme.txt file. So I've got my micro SD card in the card reader. I'm going to start up Belina Etcher. Now you could use other tools as well if you wanted to, but I'm using Belina Etcher here. And I'm just going to drag the image file across select the target and I've only got the one option here and it is the card but whatever you do make sure that you are selecting the right thing so I'm going to click the button to select that and then click flash so I'll let that do its stuff and then come back when it's finished So having a quick look back at the readme file, you can see that it says about expanding the partition and uh, backing up the ROMs partition contents, deleting the ROMs partition. I'm going to kind of do that, but I'm going to do it in a slightly different way. And I'm not too worried about backing up that ROMs partition because I'm using the blank micro SD card and there isn't going to be any content on there to back up anyway. So what I'm using here is the free version of Minitool Partition Wizard. And again, I'll leave a link to where you can get that in the description below. So scrolling down here, you'll see at the bottom where it says disk six, that's the micro SD card. And you can see that it's created a number of partitions. I've got unallocated storage at the beginning and unallocated storage at the end. So what we need to do is to make the ROMs partition as big as possible. Now I've got a pretty good idea as to which is which here. I know that the first partition, which is a fat partition, should be called MISC. And I know that the last partition, that uh, one which is labeled up as the K drive, should be called ROMs. So the first thing I need to do is to reclaim that unallocated storage. So let's start with uh, the ROMs partition. So I'm going to click on that and then I'm going to right click on it to uh, bring up this menu. and you'll see up here there's an option to move or resize that partition. So I'm going to select that. And you can see that we've got a slider here which we could just drag across right to the very end. And you'll notice that the partition size has now changed to be 57.67 gig. So all I need to do now is click on OK. And then I need to apply that change. So I'm going to click on the apply button, yes, and then just let it do its stuff. So I don't need to deal with the G drive. We've got eight meg of unallocated space in front of that. Now I just want to consolidate that. There's no point having that there. I'd rather make that fat partition as big as it can be there. It doesn't need to be huge, but there's no point wasting that 8 meg. So same thing again. I'm going to click on that to select it, right click on it, and then choose the move and resize. 
And it looks like it's already decided what it's going to do there. Uh, so there's no unallocated space before. The, the new size will be 17.95. Click on OK. And again, apply that change. Yes. Let it do its stuff. And that's it. Now these two partitions that we've just worked on, the first one should be called MISC and the, sec the last one should be called ROMs. And they're not actually called that, and I don't know why they haven't been labelled, but let's fix that just now. So going back to the, the final one, which is going to be for ROMs, again, right-click to bring up the menu, up to Label, and I'm just going to call it ROMs, OK, and apply the change. And I'll do a set the same sort of thing to the other partition and call that one MISC. So just to make sure everything's worked, I've ejected the micro SD card and I'm putting it into the RG35XX. So when I boot up, I see the garlic OS splash screen followed by the menu. Now the screen's a little dim, but it's easy enough to increase the brightness. I just haven't done it here. So let's take a look at the consoles and you'll see that there appears to be nothing. And the reason for that is that I haven't actually got an, a TF2 card in the slot there and I haven't got any ROMs on the uh, TF1 card. So because there's no uh, games there to display or it doesn't show the consoles. So that's not a problem. And you can see RetroArch there as well. Now, looking down here, you can see that there's a huge list of cores already installed. And this is one of the things that Mustard OS is going to be leveraging. So let's just quit out of this. I'll eject the card and put it back into the card reader on the computer. Now, at this point, you've got a decision to make. Your decision is, are you just going to use the one card, TF1, and put your ROMs on there? Or are you going to use two cards and put your ROMs on the TF2 card? Now, if you're going to be putting your stuff on the TF1 card, then you need to look at the ROMs partition that I've got displayed on the screen at the moment. And you can see within this partition, you've got a, a folder for your BIOS files and a folder for your ROMs. Now, these aren't populated at the moment with any files. So you need to find your own BIOS files and drop them into the BIOS folder. And in terms of ROMs, you'll see that the whole structure that you need for each of the different systems is already there in place. So if you're going to be using a TF2 card, what you need to do is highlight the ROMs folder and the BIOS folder, and then just copy those two folders across to your, your blank TF2 card and make sure that the TF2 card is in FAT32 format. Once you've done that, then you can then go about populating the BIOS folder and each of your individual ROM folders. However, for the purposes of this video, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to choose a third option. Now, Garlic OS, as you probably know, is based on Onion OS. The developer has kind of modeled Garlic OS very much on Onion OS. So the directory structure for Garlic OS for the ROMs mirrors that of Onion OS. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out my card from my Miu Mini, pop it into the TF2 slot, and use that as the source of my ROMs. So let's give this a try. So I've popped the TF1 card with Garlic OS on it back into the RG35XX, and I've put the card from my Miu Mini into the TF2 slot. So now when we scroll across and look at the consoles, you'll see that they're populated. And if I go into one of those, you'll see that there's now a list of ROMs. And if you read the Mustard OS documentation, you'll know that having a working Garlic OS setup is essential to getting Mustard OS installed in the first place. So now, at this point, we're ready to get Mustard OS installed. A quick scan down the page and you'll see what the developer was kind of aiming at with this. Basically, he's taken Garlic OS and stripped it right back to give you RetroArch as the front end. Now, RetroArch is a front end in itself. 
And a lot of people end up sticking other front ends on top of that, but it is a front end. And that's what this developer's trying to do, just to present RetroArch as the front end. So there's no other things there cluttering stuff up and you can just get straight in and do pretty much everything you need to do. And I've got to admit, I really like that. And if you look at the section which says obtaining mustard OS, you'll see there's a link there. So if you click on that and then download that zip file somewhere safe, extract the contents of the zip file and you'll get a directory called MUOS. And if you have a look inside that, you'll see that there's two other folders. One called misc underscore partition and the one, another one called rom underscore partition. Now the contents of these folders just needs to be dragged and dropped onto the corresponding partitions on the micro SD card. But before we do that, if you have a quick look in the core directory, you'll see that it already has pretty much all of the cores that you're going to need. So when you look at the instructions, it tells you that you need to uh, move all the cores in the .retroarch folder of uh, garlic OS onto the core directory in this and do this, that and the other. But a lot of these things are already done. So anyway, let me show you what I'm going to do. So first things first, I've got the micro SD card in the card reader. I've clicked on the MISC partition, and what I'm doing is I'm highlighting the contents of the Mustard OS MISC partition contents, and I'm just going to drag and drop those files onto the MISC partition on the micro SD card. So moving on to the ROM partition in the Mustard OS download and going to the ROMs partition on the micro SD card and I'm going to just highlight everything that's in there in that uh, ROM partition from Mustard OS and drag it across onto the micro SD card into the ROM partition. So I'll let that uh, do its stuff there. So now that that's complete, I'm going to eject the cards and put it back into the TF1 card slot on the RG35XX. And I've already got my card from the Miu Mini in the TF2 card slot, which has got all my ROMs on it. So I'll start up the RG35XX. And you can see the Mustard OS splash screen. It's not the best splash screen. I don't know who's putting that much mustard on anything, quite honestly. Now, if you're somebody who loves all the garlic OS icons and fancy menus, and the, the same with Onion OS for that matter, then you might hate this. I don't know. Personally, I love it. It's just RetroArch. It's all you really need. It's lean, it's fast, and it works. There's no messing about. It's just straight into stuff. Now, you might be saying to yourself, yeah, but how do I get access to my games? The simple answer is create a playlist. Let me show you how to do that. All you need to do from the main menu is go to playlists, import content. I would recommend choosing a manual scan. I personally find that, that that's what works best for me. Choose content directory. Now there's no mention of the TF2 card anywhere on the Mustard OS documentation. So I was initially a bit worried that that might not work and that you would only be able to choose stuff from the TF1 card. However, that's not the case. You're presented with the folders on the TF1 card, but the thing to do is to choose parent directory. You then get an option uh, of MMC, which is the TF1, and then the SD card, which is TF2. So choose that. If you're using the TF2 card, that is, you can then go down to your ROMs folder, select that and choose the system that you're going to be loading ROMs for. Now, I'm just going to use Game Boy to start with. So then choose the scan this directory option. And that puts you back at the manual scan menu options. So the next thing you need to do, 
is to choose system name. So just scroll down and until you get to whatever the system is you're installing, and in my case it's Nintendo Game Boy. Now you need to choose the core that you want to be using. So it's really up to you. I think you'll find that some are going to work better than others. So it might be a bit of trial and error to find the one which you prefer. So I'm going to choose Gambati. I don't actually have any existing playlist, but I, I tend to set that to on as a matter of uh, practice anyway. And then start scan. And backing out, you'll notice that on the playlists screen, we now have a new entry at the bottom, Nintendo Game Boy. And if I select that, you'll see a list of all the games. So choosing one of those, and then choosing Run. And if you hit the Menu button, it brings up this option, which is your Quick Menu option in RetroArch. And you can resume the game, restart, etc, etc. And you'll see the things there for saving and loading states, core options, where you can change the colorization, etc. So I could uh, change it from that awful pink color that it's kind of got at the moment to something else, but I'm not going to do that just now. Uh, you can add it to the favorites. You've got a whole load of cheats options there. And if you kind of go down, you'll see that uh, there's tons of those. You've got Game Genie and some of the other systems as well. So that's it. So for any other systems you want to add, just repeat that process. You know, if it was uh, Game Boy Color, just go back into the Game Boy Color folder, scan for that, make sure you give it the, the Game Boy Color name, and that will just create a playlist for that. So that's it. That's Busted OS. Now, yeah, it's got a few rough edges at the moment. And one of the things I really hope that the developer gets sorted out sooner rather than later is this sleep function. Because I'm used to being able to kind of tap the power button and put it to sleep or long press to switch the device off. And at the moment, whenever I touch the power button, it switches off. So, yeah, that's a bit of a problem. But other than that, I think it's fantastic. And I'm sure it'll get that sorted out pretty quickly. And much as I like Mustard OS, if you want to see my real favorite front end for the Anbenic RG35XX, then check out the video that's on the screen now. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed already.